I will uh, I will be the one presenting for Atom's position on uh, nuclear produced hydrogen as the key low carbon technology in the decarbonized Europe. Followed by Jean Maurice Jimet, operation and maintenance manager at Hynamics, who will let us know more about the low carbon hydrogen production. We will then have uh, Nicola Riga from uh, Energy Director from uh, CEFIC, the European Chemical Industry Council, with a presentation on how hydrogen can be a decarbonization solution. And uh, the last but not least, an overview of government support for hydrogen from uh, uh, the perspective of Hungary by uh, Dr. Joseph Super, Innovation Director at PIP Nonprofit uh, Kraftwerk. Please uh, send us uh, your questions during the presentation. They will be discussed uh, with the presenter during our Q&A session that will follow the presentations. But before starting with the presentation, I would like to presentations. I would like to give the floor to Yves de Bazet uh, for Atom Director General for a short introduction. Please, Yves, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Andre, and uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Thank you for attending this webinar. Just very short, uh, very short introduction because I don't want to 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 spend too much time uh, on that. Uh, there are plenty of inter important topics to be discussed uh, this afternoon. Just just a reminder that we are uh, the EU is committed now to reach a zero emission target in 2050, and this this uh, um, this target is very ambitious. We all know that, and we know that we also know that uh, there is this comes with a significant increase in electrification rates in across Europe, uh, up to levels of. 50, even 60 percent in different uh, across different scenarios. But even with this uh, and this power, we'll have to be fully get decarbonized uh, for sure. But uh, it means also that uh, so there will be uh, some uh, still a lot of sectors that will not be uh, electrified at the, uh, at into that horizon of time. And we have to also consider different vectors uh, of, of energy. Uh, that would be have also to be uh, decarbonized. To uh, those vectors will help uh, those re those sector which are not easy to decarbonize through power. And we have in mind uh, heat, for instance, but also hydrogen would be one uh, very important one over the over the, the coming years. And uh, but when we say hydrogen, it's clear that this hydrogen, which is the topic of today will also have to be fully decarbonized, uh, for sure, but it, it will have also to fulfill uh, the, uh, the needs of uh, our industries, and uh, particularly the intensive industries. What does that mean? It means that it will have to be competitive. Uh, it will have to be as competitive as possible, and also it will have to be uh, reliable enough. It will have to be to come with a significant security of supply available 24/7, and uh, I think those conditions uh, should be regarded very carefully. And probably this will be the, one of the topics to be discussed today. So now, uh, Andre, I leave uh, the floor back to you, and uh, thank you for for this um, interesting discussion we're gonna, going to have. Thank you very much, Eve. And before uh, starting my presentation, I would kindly uh, ask um, uh, the, 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 the participants who join later um, to, um, to turn off uh, their sound and their cameras. So I will proceed with, uh, with my presentation. And uh, I will uh, I will start uh, um, 
by first uh, briefly introducing Foratom. So the Foratom is the voice of the European nuclear industry in energy policy discussions with the EU institutions and other uh, key stakeholders. I will not go uh, into details on the key topics that uh, Foratom is following, but among them, uh, uh, and recently we added uh, uh, energy sector integration and in particular uh, hydrogen. Our membership, so um, we have 15 uh, national uh, nuclear associations, we have um, corporate members. Um, I should say that not um, all our members um, are coming from uh, uh, European Union. Um, so we have also Switzerland and Ukraine and uh, recently we added the UK as well. In terms of um, uh, existing uh, and, uh, and the future, I would say, uh, nuclear fleet, uh, you can see that currently uh, in EU there are uh, 106 uh, uh, reactors on, opera under, uh, on operation and uh, six more uh, under construction. And um, I think that here we will uh, we will have uh, the first pool. Uh, we would like to to um, to ask you what what are your um, um, what is your opinion? What do you think about uh, uh, the nuclear uh, install capacity? How much is produced? For example, how much uh, did uh, of the electricity mix was produced last year? So can we run the first um, the first pool? Please check in uh, Vivox. So we have uh, several options. The pool is running. You can access it in the link in the chat. Or the, the the three dots in um, in the Microsoft Teams uh, application. Okay. So again, the pool is about uh, the question of the pool is which single source of energy accounts for the greatest share of power in the EU electricity mix. Can we close the pool and see the result? Yes, that's true. So 45% of the respondents said that it's nuclear. And yes, in 2020, even if it was a, a strange year, I would say uh, nuclear had a constant uh, uh, share of around 25%, like it was happening in the years before. Thank you very much for your response. Now I will um, um, go and focus on uh, on hydrogen. What is going on uh, currently at EU level? So you can see that more than 90% of uh, of the hydrogen uh, is uh, fossil, uh, um, so-called fossil hydrogen, and uh, we are having renewable hydrogen accounting only for 0.1% uh, uh, or the low carbon hydrogen class, uh, which is mainly gas plus CCS, which is 0.7%. Uh, so the, the, the share of the clean or uh, renewable hydrogen and low carbon hydrogen is currently very, very at a very, very low level. But um, the European Commission and uh, at EU level, we are having um, 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 a, a lot of uh, expectations and uh, a lot of ambitions. So um, I'm taking this from uh, from the EU uh, hydrogen strategy, and uh, you can see that uh, in 2030 uh, there are expected uh, around 40 gigawatt of uh, uh, renewable in, uh, hydrogen electrolyzers. So um, there are big uh, big ambitions, but. Can those targets be achieved only with renewable hydrogen as it's specified in the EU uh, um, uh, hydrogen strategy? Well, um, definitely in the strategy, we are talking also about a category called low carbon hydrogen. 
but it's uh, they, they are not so uh, the, the targets are not very clear and in four atoms opinion an economic and sustainable hydrogen uh, ambitious production cannot be uh, set without considering the electrolysis from uh, from nuclear that's clear and uh, nuclear it's uh, is definitely as you saw also uh, the biggest source of uh, low carbon electricity at u level And now we would like to uh, um, to, to come with with some um, um, some arguments, both economic and sustainable, uh, about the sustainability of uh, of this uh, hydrogen production. And uh, I would like to to say some words uh, about uh, economics. On economics, IEA, but also other organizations are considering that increasing full load hours, um, the capex, uh, the impact of capex on hydrogen cost declines. Of course, the economics is, uh, of hydrogen production is also impacted by electricity prices, and considering as well uh, it as well has been identified that the the optimal uh, functioning time for economic from economic perspective of the electrolyzers is somewhere between uh, 3000 uh, hours and uh, 6000 hours as i said so uh, it depends very much on the price of the electricity as you can see in uh, in this chart which is uh, showing this um, it's uh, is proposing this optimal uh, uh, functioning of electrolyzers is taking the the electricity prices from uh, japan but also uh, at eu level might be um, might might be a little bit different from the perspective of the price of the electricity then uh, we now I would like to to ask you, um, uh, and we will have another question uh, and another pool. It's about um, it's about the capacity factor of nuclear. So I will ask my uh, my colleague. It's already on the, on the screen. Uh, the question is, what is the capacity factor of an average uh, nuclear reactor in the EU? And I think that we can see the results now. Just a second, people are still voting. Thank you. OK, another very, very good, uh, uh, good results. Yes, it's it's true that uh, nuclear uh, it's capable to to operate over uh, with a capacity factor of over 90 uh, percent. And I think that uh, this uh, this slide is uh, more or less uh, self-explanatory. Um, explaining uh, also uh, I mean uh, providing uh, uh, more information also on uh, on what was said before. Uh, and uh, um, on the economic of um, of, uh, of hydrogen production. So uh, the optimal functioning time is somewhere between 3000 and uh, 6000 uh, hours per year. You can see that, uh, yes, of course, nuclear can uh, can uh, run uh, more than uh, more, now, more hours than uh, than the, this ideal time, but it, in I, I would say that the conclusion of this slide is not that uh, only nuclear is capable. Of course, uh, yes, it's it can be capable, but it's also uh, it should be that the, the the hydrogen production um, and the most economic path would be a combination of nuclear and renewables. And uh, yes, for uh, because of also for renewables, we will uh, we will uh, avoid curtailments. Now about the sustainability of um, of low carbon hydrogen. Um, in order to be considered sustainable, this uh, this category should uh, should have a certain carbon intensity, 
and we consider uh, that the classification and the quarantine of origin uh, of, um, of the hydrogen should be done based on the detailed life cycle assessment of the carbon intensity of the source used to produce hydrogen. So in general, for um, I would say the all low carbon sources should be the, the same treatment. And uh, in general, the hydrogen legislation should adopt a low carbon technology neutral approach. And depending on the carbon intensity of the national grid, the the production of uh, the sustainable hydrogen can be done. Um, we identified uh, in our research that uh, the hydrogen can be um, can be considered um, either uh, produced from a direct correct connection of the electrolyzer to the low carbon uh, low carbon power uh, production source, so nuclear and renewable, but also uh, in some cases where the, the grid is uh, having such a low uh, carbon intensity uh, to be um, connected directly uh, to the grid. And for this one, I, we are giving uh, a couple of examples of uh, projects, uh, nuclear projects uh, with direct uh, connection uh, to the electrolyzer. So we have one in UK and one in US. And of course, the main advantage would be uh, the avoidance of the electricity cost by uh, avoiding the transport uh, network costs. And the second one is uh, so uh, electricity from the grid. We have um, we have a project, uh, Safety High, uh, the project that is dedicated to set the carbon um, intensity thresholds, and I should say that those thresholds, uh, as you can see from uh, from this uh, chart, are quite low. Um, therefore, um, there are only uh, few countries which can uh, can achieve or can uh, can use direct uh, electricity from the grid, and to fulfill the requirements um, of uh, the certified threshold. And as you can see, uh, some of them uh, are having uh, quite a significant share of nuclear in their electricity mix. And I'm giving here uh, the example of Sweden, uh, France or uh, Finland. I will, um, having said that, I will uh, jump, uh, I will jump to the, uh, to the conclusion. Um, and we are um, proposing some, uh, policy recommendations with which in our opinion would lead to decarbonized uh, hydrogen production and consequently to support the achievement of EU decarbonization targets. So um, these policy recommendations would be um, to support all low carbon hydrogen projects and uh, also uh, initiatives like uh, Clean Hydrogen Alliance uh, to recognize the validity of nuclear based hydrogen projects to support innovation, research and developments and uh, so on. I will not get so much into details. With this, I would like to thank you very much and uh, uh, for your attention and also to let you know that uh, in the uh, next weeks we uh, we will uh, we will uh, publish a position paper on uh, on hydrogen on the nuclear uh, uh, electricity uh, produced uh, hydrogen production. And uh, you can follow the link to, to see the updates on, on this paper. So in a couple of, uh, in uh, some weeks uh, from now, uh, the, the paper will be out. So uh, thank you very much for your attention. And um, I would go now to, to the second, uh, to our second uh, uh, presentation. And um, I will give the floor to Jean-Maurice Jimé. Jean-Maurice, please, if you can uh, upload your... Uh, your presentation. Meanwhile, yeah. I think that um, uh, we can we can run uh, uh, the second, uh, the third pool that we, 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 we were planning. Can you see so, my presentation now? 
yes, we can see. Meanwhile, we are waiting for uh, for people to respond. So the question is, uh, in your opinion, what should be the EU prioritize in uh, its hydrogen policy framework? And we have two only two choices. So. Um, this is uh, a question that we will uh, also further develop during our Q&A session, definitely. So we can, if we can close the pool. Still coming in, Andre, maybe wait a minute. Please, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Jean Maurice, the floor is yours, please. We can see your presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, hello, everyone. Uh, I will be uh, uh, presenting today um, our first dynamics in the first part, and then in the second part, the development levers for low carbon uh, uh, production of hydrogen. So first, uh, dynamics position. So first, I have to say that we have a we are a subsidiary of the EDF group at 100%. Uh, we are focusing on uh, low carbon and renewable hydrogen. Our activities is to be a producer uh, of uh, uh, hydrogen um, and to supply this hydrogen uh, to two uh, main markets, which are industry and mobility, especially. Uh, heavy mobility um, to achieve this, um, this goal. So our business model um, is to um, develop, design uh, and invest uh, in the uh, assets of production and distribution of hydrogen. And we are also performing the uh, operation and maintenance over the 20 years lifetime of, uh, of the projects. And we are mainly focusing on uh, eight countries. Um, well, I would say in priority France and uh, Germany. Um, and then in a second priority, uh, mostly uh, the rest of Europe, Belgium, Italy, UK, um, and, uh, and the US, and in a third part, um, uh, the um, United Arab Emirates and, the, uh, and China. Um, well, to achieve such goals, so as I was saying, we are present on the entire value chain of uh, the production of hydrogen. Um, from the development, uh, going through the, the construction uh, and the operation and maintenance of, of the assets, and also integrating uh, to support this value chain our R&D internally in the group. Uh, it has been done well previously by investing in a in a, maf in a manufacturer of electrolyzer and uh, HRS. Uh, thanks to uh, the support of our R&D uh, and also now uh, through a, a platform uh, in which we are testing a, a megawatt uh, electrolyzer uh, from McPhee. So uh, that's to say that this, uh, this value chain is involving um, all dynamics, uh, but also the rest of the EDF group, uh, including uh, some of our engineering uh, from nuclear, uh, thermal and, uh, and hydraulic plants. Uh, to achieve such goals, so um, well, um, uh, well, you have to understand we're not the only player, but uh, uh, the DF group uh, has well understood uh, that producing hydrogen thanks to electrolysis uh, was, uh, as you mentioned, Andre, uh, using a, uh, and requiring a lot of electricity, which is one of the, I would say, main uh, weight in the cost of hydrogen produced by electrolysis. So that's why um, we provide uh, well this supply uh, at the best price uh, of the electricity uh, using the expertise inside the group uh, to select uh, the electrolyzer and the different components uh, to uh, to achieve the production and the distribution of uh, of hydrogen. Um, of course, with an approach of uh, uh, having the right electricity uh, to have the uh, a uh, low carbon hydrogen, whether an energy coming from the grid uh, in certain countries like France and for the other uh, countries on which we are focusing, we are more looking at a renewable uh, uh, renewable electricity, 
produced through uh, wind farms, offshore wind farms or, or PV, PV projects, but also um, uh, nuclear. Uh, you mentioned the uh, um, the Asian project uh, in the UK. Uh, I was participating to this project and it was relying on electricity produced from nuclear. So that's also an important option. Um, our uh, ambition is to warranty uh, a long-term hydrogen price uh, thanks to a warranted uh, price also of the uh, electricity. And uh, to achieve such, such goal, uh, we have to uh, um, rely on, uh, I would say, the EDF strengths of uh, a local presence and a territorial presence, whether for industrial or mobility projects. Uh, and invest uh, in such project as we are providing the hydrogen uh, as a service. So, as uh, some example of the industrial projects we are involved in too. Um, so, a uh, first one is the West Coaster 100 project in Germany. Uh, uh, yes, sorry. sorry, Andre. Um, I don't know. Um, can you put this in presentation mode because uh, I, uh, we I we got. Ah, okay. Sorry, yes. I am in presentation mode, but maybe okay. it's the, the wrong screen. Um, let me check. Sorry about that. Ah, I I get your point. Yes, it's. Uh, sorry, I didn't notice. Um, is it now in a? Uh, um, not, not yet. So, not, yeah, not yeah, so, I, so I have. Yeah, yeah, I have to. Uh, now it should be better. Uh, sorry about that. Now it should be. Uh, yes, I'm and, really uh, sorry. I... No, 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 no problem. Yes, now it's uh, is better. But uh, yes, there are some. Uh, so we we got uh, to to some slides that uh, yes. Now it's. Uh, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, yes, yeah, so I was um, going to present one of the two projects uh, I will uh, um, do a focus on. So the West Coast 100 project, which is a uh, a project in Germany. Um, for which we have we have been selected or, or awarded uh, back in August 2020 um, uh, in a consortium uh, who uh, um, Orsted and the Hyder refinery, uh, uh, including Dynamics, are part of this uh, of this consortium. Um, so the um, the project is to uh, uh, feed a, a refinery. Uh, uh, of hydrogen in, in hydrogen with hydrogen, sorry, with a 30 megawatt electrolyzer, which will be installed installed directly on the uh, uh, refinery site, um, and um, also uh, this uh, hydrogen will be used uh, in complement with a cementary, uh, with producing CO2, uh, and they will be combined to uh, to produce methanol. So. Uh, that's the first part of the project, and it will lead to uh, uh, a second phase, uh, which will be uh, a lot bigger, uh, as it will uh, aim at uh, 700 megawatts uh, of uh, electrolyzer uh, installed in the in the same area. The second one, um, it's not uh, a refinery project, but it's uh, again there is a cementery uh, which is involved. Uh, here we can see that there are two benefits uh, in. Uh, um, uh, using an electrolyzer uh, because on the one hand uh, you have the oxygen that will be used to boost uh, the combustion the combustion of the uh, oven of the cemetery uh, and the hydrogen uh, will be combined with a, a CO2 again like for the West Coast 100 project in order to um, produce methanol for mainly mobility uh, to be export uh, and for industrial purposes so that's uh, a bigger project uh, which will arrive uh, roughly at the same time as the West Coast 100 in time with uh, over 300 megawatt of electrolysis. Uh, so that's um, over uh, 120 ton of hydrogen per year uh, and as you can see uh, 207 uh, 
thousand ton uh, per year of uh, decarbonated methanol, uh, and also well uh, over a million ton uh, of CO2 every year avoided. So those are two, I would say, large scale projects uh, on which we are focusing on, uh, which are, I would say, uh, bigger than other industrial or mobility projects, which may be more around the one and five megawatt range. On the second part uh, of the um, presentation, I will focus on the perspective uh, in Europe and the development levels uh, of the uh, low carbon hydrogen production. So, well, after COVID, uh, there has been a, um, a, a, a long, uh, many announcements uh, in France for us. It was called the recovery plan, um, focusing in uh, boosting the hydrogen uh, production uh, with uh, around three million, uh, three billion, sorry, uh, euros uh, in 2023, and they will be completed uh, in um, in 2030. Uh, to uh, achieve uh, 7 billion of euros uh, invested uh, to um, boost the production of hydrogen for mobility and and, uh, and industry as well. Uh, in Germany, it was announced uh, before, and they are also uh, aiming at uh, granting 10 billion euros uh, for the hydrogen, uh, uh, green hydrogen or low carbon hydrogen uh, production. So that's around yeah, three to five gigawatt in total. And if you look at all across Euro, Europe and you accumulate all the um, all the, sub, the subsidies and the helps uh, that will be uh, provided to promote hydrogen, uh, we reach roughly 100 billion of euros uh, of support from the various uh, government and, and different support uh, uh, subsidies. So that's, yeah nearly twice um, uh, 40 gigawatt uh, produced. So that is uh, quite in, in line, I would say, with the first step. And then we have this uh, um, forecast by 2050, uh, which aims, as you can see, as um, uh, 55 uh, uh, million tons of CO2 emission avoided. Whereas, if I come back on the previous slide, uh, we were focusing in France of 6 million tonne of CO2 avoided. So that's roughly in the line of a, a huge acceleration uh, from now up to 2030 and then to 2050. Um, and um, yeah, I would say to open the, the debate, but uh, um, when we look at uh, what are the levers uh, for dynamics to develop the, the sector of uh, low carbon hydrogen, um, we uh, strongly recommend on the operational side uh, that well the, the capex will reduce over time for each technology, whether alkaline or or um, chem. Uh, so that will help uh, in making the project more competitive. Um, of course, small uh, projects will not help uh, to have a, a, a low uh, low carbon hydrogen at a competitive price. So we will. Uh, mainly focus on large scale project and large scale installation as the one I have uh, presented you uh, in the previous slides. Um, and well, and there is, a, uh, of course, and it was said before, um, a, a huge, I would say, uh, action that's need to be done in providing uh, electricity, uh, renewable and low carbon as well, uh, at a really competitive price with the right mechanism to benefit from tax avoidance or, or, or competitive price to make this hydrogen uh, really competitive and decarbonate uh, this, uh, this industry. On the public authority side, um, yeah, we are aiming at uh, uh, encouraging countries to, to set up support mechanisms. So we have seen that there are uh, already uh, some mechanisms that are, uh, I would say, in the pipe to support such projects. Um, then uh, adapting to the strengths uh, of the country's concern. I think that was said by Andre. When you look at some uh, um, production uh, of electricity in various countries, there are some in which it makes sense to promote low carbon hydrogen and other in which you have to promote uh, renewable hydrogen. So that's definitely uh, one point that needs to be uh, taken into account by the public authorities. And then, yeah, um, 
I would say, uh, structure what already exists uh, to, to make it uh, more efficient. So that's part of uh, what I was saying uh, previously. Thank you, everyone. And well, don't hesitate if you have any question. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jean-Maurice. Very, very interesting. We have already some uh, some questions, but uh, we will uh, save them for uh, for the Q&A &A session. If you would like, uh, we, we can run now uh, one or um, um, two pools that, um, um, yes, okay, yeah. they are more or less related to, so please, Jessica. If we can, uh, if we can run the pools uh, until uh, Nicola will uh, will prepare the will prepare his uh, his slides. So um, the first uh, pool would be which sector should hydrogen address as a priority to decarbonize the economy. We leave one minute for the people to respond. So I think that we can close this one. Can we see some results? Yeah, just still a couple coming in. Still some more. Okay. Thank you. Interesting, interesting result. And the second one would be what lever uh, do you think helps the most in developing uh, hydrogen as a pathway to decarbonization? Two minutes. Okay, can we close the poll? Couple more seconds as they're still coming in. Okay. So, interesting, yeah. yes, interesting that uh, mm -hmm. developing large scale installations and facilitating access to low carbon electricity had the same uh, uh, yeah. the same results. Yes, but yeah. let's uh, let's connect the comment it during the Q and A session if it's okay. uh, the case. Thank you very much, Jean Maurice. Yeah. Now I will uh, give the floor to Nicola. Nicola, please. Yes, thank you, Andrea, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Just to make sure that the is it yes, is it in the is is it in the full cruise? Screen? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Okay, very good. So uh, again, uh, thank you very much, Andre, for uh, the opportunity to uh, present the viewpoint also from um, the chemical industry um, for the ones who are. Uh, not familiar with the chemical industry as a whole, uh, just a few slides of, to introduce um, what we represent. Um, the European chemical industry is the second uh, uh, in the world when it comes to competition. Um, we are uh, uh, a bit ahead of, of the US, um, which is slightly be behind the EU, but you see that the, the big market is, is China by far. Um, but we are uh, um, on, on, a, on a competing level. And um, uh, what is important also from, you will see from the next slide, is um, the role that we are playing for uh, the European economy and also in an international context. Um, we, are, we can rely on more than 5,000 um, chemical industry experts. Um, we have uh, um, certainly we have lots of SMEs in our uh, organization, but actually the the, the large uh, industrial sites are the ones that make up the most when it comes to sales um, and employment. Um, 
it's almost 550 billion of uh, euros in sales in 2019, uh, and we have a trade surplus of 42 uh, billion euros. I think this is something which is uh, uh, important to mention that um, being able to export means that we are uh, um, an industry which is competing globally. And we are also one of the largest uh, uh, investors when it comes to manufacturing in Europe. Just to say that this is uh, um, an industry which is uh, alive, dynamic, and is looking forward uh, in uh, when it comes to embracing the challenges of um, uh, a carbon neutral economy and what is the role that our industry plays within that. Now, for this presentation, I, I prepared a few slides that are looking at, uh, they're, they're taken from a study we did in 2017. Um, this study was looking at uh, uh, potentials for our industry to reduce emissions by 2050. Again, 2017, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's four years ago, but it seems uh, uh, almost a decade ago, when it come, or even more when it comes to the policy landscape in which we are operating. At that time, we were looking at um, uh, different scenarios. Um, one was an intermediate, which was already pushing more than what we are doing already nowadays with regulation. Then there was an ambitious one, try to move things forward. And then there was a maximum, um, which was a, a, an upper limits, really going to, to, the, lim to, to the boundaries of, of um, what could be the theoretical potential of um, emission reductions for the sector. And you see on the right side, I hope you can see clearly the uh, the, the maximum potential was really going to, to, to the boundaries of what we could do. And this was in 2017. Now, um, in the meantime, we had uh, a new European Commission, we had the Green Deal, um, and we have uh, the, the commitment, um, of, uh, still to be finalized, but the commitment from the EU to go to carbon neutral by 2050. And suddenly, this uh, maximum scenario, which was, uh, which seems to be the really the extreme boundaries, actually is becoming, um, in a way, the uh, expected deliveries that we, we have to, to provide as a sector. So um, the other scenarios are still important, but uh, I think we are more and more orienting ourselves towards uh, those uh, boundaries. And um, when it comes to what does it mean uh, for hydrogen and the chemical industry, this graphic is showing all these scenarios compared with each other and uh, in, in the progressive uh, manner. And uh, um, I hope that if I move my mouse, it's also is it visible also on the, on the screen. Um, hope so. Anyway, I confirm, I confirm yes. Okay, because what is important, you see that you have. Um, uh, let's just focus on this uh, big bar, which is uh, in the maximum scenario by 2050. So that's where we need to, to be. And um, you will see that you have um, uh, a series of, of options, and some of them were already presented in, in, in by the previous presenter. Um, but you see that when you see you have many options where we are involving uh, uh, hydrogen for BTX, uh, for methanol, uh, for urea, for ammonium, olefins. And if you put them all these together, it's really making up for, I would say, most more than, than, than half or even two thirds of, of what you had to deliver by 2050. So the, the, the challenges, it's, it, it's, it's quite significant. And the, for us as a chemical industry, um, when we talk about hydrogen, uh, it's uh, primarily a discussion about feedstock. So how are we going to replace our fossil-based feedstock uh, with, with hydrogen? And then it's also a matter of, of um, energy. But uh, it's, it's quite unique. <clears throat> that we need to, dis to address uh, first and foremost uh, the issue of, uh, of feedstock because that's how we make um, chemicals and, and most of the uh, organic uh, chemicals come from organic chemical it, it's all about combining hydrogen with uh, carbon so the moment we we phase uh, away fr from uh, fossil carbon we need to f we need to find other ways to get these molecules to combine them with hydrogen so for us it's really a key to address the feedstock element and uh, in tandem also the energy quest. Now, when it comes to what does it mean to, pr to produce this hydrogen, uh, this is the next graphic. And this is probably the most, uh, uh, from energy uh, perspective, the most interesting and also scary one, I would say, because um, this shows what how much electricity would our industry uh, request to decarbonize. 
And these green dots that you see, this curve, this is what um, the IEA was foreseen as um, uh, the availability of carbon-free electricity in the whole Europe. So you, you, we might discuss the, 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 the precise numbering, but uh, what I think is it's relevant from this slide is that the magnitude that we are facing when it comes to uh, electricity demand it is substantial. So we would be the electricity, the, the carbon free electricity that our industry will need is would be more than what is the total demand for electricity across Europe. Um, so how are we going to get there? Um, I'm sure there will be technological improvements. Uh, I'm sure there will be, we will find out more good news. But nevertheless, I think it's important to to stress one once more that the magnitude that we are facing is um, unprecedented and, and we need to work all together to to make this uh, uh, reality um, something well, well this this uh, future a reality where we can all uh, be part of it and then this leads me to my last slide prepared for today as an introduction J just a few, few uh, let's say food for thoughts um, what we see is that the quest for hydrogen is, is first and foremost uh, a quest for electricity. Um, no matter how we try to square the circle, uh, we will need electrons. And we need uh, uh, electricity that uh, will have to be carbon free, cost competitive and uh, abundant, uh, a lot of electricity. And, um, and electricity, as it was also shown in, in the previous slides, um, uh, by other speakers, uh, we are talking about uh, direct and indirect electrification. Uh, the question is, um, uh, is would there be enough for, for both? Um, because uh, clearly um, an electro can only be used once. Um, so how are we going to square the circle also there? And, um, and we are trying to, to look at what kind of scenarios are we going to see um, in the next future and where are companies moving? And I think that we are seeing already now a combination of different options uh, and we are still in the testing phase, but I think we should be open um, to um, to experience all of them uh, at the same time. One is uh, about hydrogen, which is delivered by, by a pipeline. So it's, it's, uh, we're using electricity to produce uh, hydrogen at the, at the point of, of, of production of hydrogen, and this hydrogen is, um, is delivered via pipelines to, to, the, to the consumers. Um, but we're also seeing uh, um, companies that are uh, uh, testing um, on-site hydrogen production, so ele electrolyzers uh, uh, at the um, industrial site, and it's uh, used for um, energy purposes, so to use it uh, uh, when there is a um, low, low electricity uh, cost, um, due to excess of, of electricity from renewables, to use it uh, to produce uh, hydrogen on site to be used afterwards when, when the, the prices go up again. But we're also seeing um, uh, work, and I think that the previous uh, presentation was uh, going in this direction also on, on um, using um, on site hydrogen production to create low carbon feedstock or, or, or fuels, low carbon fuel, so that we can um, use uh, molecules of CO2, combine it with hydrogen and then make new products out of um, the, industry, the the production site. And I think all of, this, all of these options uh, will be um, explored at, at different uh, uh, stages, in different uh, settings, in different geographical conditions. I think we need to be prepare to see all these uh, models that will be deployed. And, and it might be that one reinforced the other, I don't know, but it's, it's still it's an early process. What is important is that we need to get all these um, solutions uh, uh, up and running uh, by 2030 so that we can have the chance of uh, uh, rolling up properly in, in an orderly fashion way. And uh, I think these um, events are the good uh, settings in which we can um, have a conversation uh, across the whole um, energy value chain and see how we can uh, work together to make this uh, a reality 
something which is not only on on, uh, on slides but becomes a reality in which we can all work together thank you very much i'm looking forward for the discussion thank you very much uh, nicola and um, yes i'm really glad that um, um, you 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 are participating to these discussions as we saw in uh, one of the previous uh, uh, questions so uh, uh, responses to one of the pool um, uh, it's clear that industry is uh, is the, the the first i would say uh, sector that uh, uh, will benefit or should benefit from uh, hydrogen production and having uh, industry in uh, in our event is great and uh, yes, I mean, uh, <laughs> you have a very, very ambitious target. So <laughs> I, I wish you uh, all the best. OK, um, we will discuss anyway during our um, um, Q&A session. And uh, now um, the last but not least, um, we, will, we will hear from uh, the perspective of, uh, of the Hungarian uh, uh, government and we have Joseph. I will upload right away the presentation. Okay. Okay, I hope that you, you can see it. Yes, yes, I can see and uh, thank you uh, very much uh, for the possibility to to make this presentation. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. So I want to talk about uh, hydrogen uh, as a perspective from, from government uh, support and uh, and how it looks like and uh, as you see my in my on my first uh, slide it's it's a puzzle that that uh, consists of many elements and uh, and all the elements uh, shall go hand in hand in order to have a hydrogen based economy by 2050 and i, I want to highlight uh, what i think uh, are the most important uh, policy steps in order to do so and also from a a, a micro level uh, I'd like to talk about uh, a specific uh, pilot project uh, in uh, one of the regions of in Hungary, where we'd like to try out uh, uh, the value chain and development of, of hydrogen. So please go to the next uh, slide. Uh, so as you see here, uh, I think, uh, first of all, it's a step-by-step -step, uh, approach. It should be definitely a step-by-step a approach approach where we focus on the techno-economic uh, mm, characteristics of hydrogen uh, as, as, as a product, as green hydrogen or zero emission, emission-free hydrogen as a product. Uh, we need to take into consideration where we are in this field. If you take a look at the, the electric vehicle market, I think uh, right now we are uh, in the third pillar. We try to cover uh, the cost gap to attract uh, not just investors because investors are on board but also the consumer part so uh, and i think the same uh, will uh, be applied uh, to to hydrogen uh, we, uh, right now uh, as of now uh, the european union is is in the in the second uh, part uh, the pilot uh, project uh, uh, support uh, part uh, plus r and d part so we try to do pilot projects that are uh, in between pilot and scale up, but it, this is a definitely not uh, the full uh, scale up as, as as we see right now. It's it's not a, a full stack uh, scale up uh, process, but but we as a as a European Union we try to uh, uh, create uh, some uh, good basis uh, to the scale up uh, process. Uh, uh, as I think we are over uh, regarding the technological clusters and, and platforms. We have it. We have it in in the European Union. We have it in, in Hungary. We have uh, uh, operational uh, platforms, hydrogen platform, where we try to create the ecosystem of uh, uh, zero emission hydrogen. And uh, we shifting now to the pilot project uh, side in Hungary. Uh, and of course, the most important and, you know, the, the most uh, in terms of capex uh, and in terms of resources, the third is, is really the key to how to cover the cost gap to attract investors, how to cover the, uh, uh, the cost gap where larger corporations uh, will see it uh, a viable option. Also, 
from the perspective of uh, economics. And I know that it's, it's, it may not be in a little bit in line with, uh, with uh, reducing just the emission and not, uh, not uh, taking a look at uh, uh, the, the techno-economic part of, uh, of the technology. I think it's, uh, it, it needs lots of resources. Uh, as you see in European Union documents, uh, it's around 400 billion euro capex where the support should be around uh, 100 billion um, because technology will improve and uh, we can reach uh, that 1.2 euro per kilogram uh, price for from an electrolyzer using uh, uh, green or uh, emission free energy and uh, this is uh, around if you compare and we are uh, lots of us uh, are from the nuclear industry it's around 60, the equivalent of 60 new nuclear power plant. So this is the capex requirement by 2050. If we want to talk about uh, a hydrogen based uh, economy, fully scaled up and uh, using hydrogen as as uh, as uh, one of the main uh, 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 energy uh, uh, resources or intermediary. And 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 I think it this is a uh, this is doable. This is doable. It needs a it needs a, a focus uh, from the European Union, which we can see. If you see the flagship project is uh, one of the flagships of the European strategy uh, for the next uh, uh, 20 years is hydrogen. So we are here. This this is uh, definitely here, and uh, and we can we can see that this uh, uh, hydrogen uh, uh, based uh, economical thinking is is really. Not just something that's R and D, but it's it's uh, in between uh, pilot and scale up right now. And now we need to shift uh, uh, to the cost gap part. And then, of course, uh, we need to manage the demand side. If you see here the fourth uh, fourth pillar, uh, we need to see the we need to uh, develop the demand side as well. And it, you can you can do it uh, by binding uh, green hydrogen uh, commitment systems uh, plus uh, compulsory systems. I think you, uh, as as we saw it in in other dimensions in the energy, this is also necessary. I think in order to to have a a, a system where we develop the value chain uh, and uh, the infrastructure needed for uh, for for hydrogen. Uh, and le let's move to the next slide, please. Here, I I wanted to to give you a summary and uh, maybe a structure how. It looks like in the European Union and in Hungary, uh, we can talk about uh, the legislative part, which is policy and strategic uh, part. Uh, it, it's it's fully ready in the EU. It's uh, fully ready in Hungary. It's uh, it's fully um, highlighted in in the Hungarian National Energy Strategy 2030 that hydrogen is 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 part of the ecosystem. And you know, it's it's also important to to see that uh, it's part of the system. It, 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 this hydrogen will take part from decarbonization, one of the main pillars. But we we always want to see a system where there are many pillars that support uh, each other uh, towards the, the emission uh, free uh, future by 2050. Uh, and then we uh, uh, on the middle, you can see the associations. It's uh, it's also a fully functioning system in uh, also EU level, also in Hungary. We have a hydrogen hydrogen technology platform, which is very active in uh, creating the ecosystem of hydrogen. And in terms of the financing, because uh, without financing, I think uh, we couldn't talk about many projects. Uh, uh, I, I think the majority of the hydrogen, large scale hydrogen projects as of now, completed as of now, uh, have EU or government uh, uh, transfers uh, because, uh, because these are uh, pilot projects. Uh, so we have to take a look at the, the financing option part. Uh, and uh, you can see, uh, and of course, you are very familiar with the, the European uh, facilities. In Hungary, we also have uh, several facilities, not just the operational programs, but also we have R&D uh, resources allocated to hydrogen. And we 
we had, uh, for example, we had uh, a carbon-free excess energy utilization R&D call for proposal that uh, uh, where uh, one of uh, the the main uh, uh, supporting mechanism went to power to hydrogen pilots. So in the near future, we can see uh, power to hydrogen pilots uh, at least uh, three, four in Hungary. So I think uh, this uh, this is very very promising uh, for the future. And uh, and uh, as uh, as you said before, I think uh, Andre that uh, technology the technological improvement of hydrogen in terms of uh, pricing uh, it will come because uh, because of course uh, because of course uh, 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 it's it's uh, it's a scaling uh, up uh, uh, issue. Uh, uh, let's go to the next uh, slide, which uh, where I wanna wanna take uh, a look at a a pilot project, uh, a transportation uh, pilot project uh, in Central Danube, and it's uh, it's interesting because uh, in for you um, as well because in Central Danube uh, we're gonna have the Pox2 nuclear power plant uh, development, and uh, we wanna set up. Uh, a micro value chain development uh, for the whole all uh, elements of, of uh, the hydrogen value chain. Uh, and our aim is uh, to scale up from a city to a region in terms of uh, mass transit systems uh, using uh, hydrogen based uh, buses uh, plus uh, garbage tracks. This, this is the, the public uh, part. And uh, of course, we want to support uh, the logistics uh, uh, and the shift towards uh, hydrogen in terms of logistical vehicles. But that's not uh, the public part, uh, but the private part of the project. Uh, but uh, our aim is is to have uh, one value, value chain, one hydrogen production site, uh, one storage site, and one uh, distribution system. Uh, because uh, if we do isolated projects, Hungary is a small country, then it will not uh, be good. So we need to scale up uh, first in a city, and the city is Pox, which is uh, uh, the city where the nuclear power plant uh, uh, will, is, is being built. Uh, and then we can scale up uh, to regional level, and after this uh, we can we can see the ins and outs of a, a, a fully functioning uh, a pilot project. And uh, please uh, go to the to the 10th uh, slide, uh, maybe the last one, uh, because I, I would like to take uh, you to to this, uh, not this one, to the backup slide, please, the, the 10, number 10. Mm -hmm. uh, one more, please, one more. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you can see in this slide, I, I can't see that number 10 right now, only the CDPR's goals. Uh, maybe one more if you can. OK, this one, yes. So uh, you can see that uh, we try to shift uh, towards uh, um, hydrogen and we try to scale up uh, from a city to, to region. And we have uh, a emission, an emission free energy and mobility program in this region and we have uh, functioning electric buses 10 electric buses we have energy generation plus uh, charging uh, station system and uh, we are planning right now the scale up in the city 70 electric buses and 10 uh, fuel cell buses uh, plus uh, an electrolyzer which is uh, 1.5 um, uh, megawatts a very small system uh, in terms of the systems that uh, you were talking about uh, uh, before. Uh, but uh, here, uh, I think the game is uh, to create uh, a system and a value chain where we try to have a functioning uh, small scale system. And uh, on, on top of it, uh, we try to have innovation projects and uh, and I think, uh, uh, so first of all, hydrogen innovation uh, uh, projects are, are included in this, uh, in this uh, program. And we, we try to uh, add additional elements like uh, the energy community and the regional aggregator system. 
where we use uh, the capacity <coughs> of uh, of various uh, stakeholders in in the region to try to balance the energy and i think uh, later on hydrogen and we try to prove it hydrogen can be a balancing system uh, for the power grid and uh, we we have a pilot project that's uh, that's all about how to transact between uh, between various uh, stakeholders and how how to include uh, the nuclear power plant into this game because uh, because we think that the nuclear power plant is is definitely something that uh, that's uh, that's uh, th that will play a very important role uh, in in uh, the zero emission uh, hydrogen program and uh, i think uh, i i don't have uh, more time so we can go to the conclusion slide uh, please which is uh, here yes so i think uh, without government support and policies which is policies and government uh, non-refundable transfers are very important to achieve the 2050 targets uh, without this it's uh, it's impossible and uh, my second remark is that the nuclear power plant is definitely a viable option towards emission free hydrogen production our idea is uh, to use a direct cable to the connection because uh, to the to the electrolyzer because uh, in doing so we could make uh, the nuclear power a little bit more flexible for the outside world uh, because uh, because uh, 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 we could uh, um, ramp up and down uh, the production a little bit we need to use a, a direct uh, target cable uh, to the to the electrolyzer uh, a little bit far away from the nuclear power plant definitely so from the electrolyzer perspective nuclear is a cheap and emission free electricity supply for sure very cheap i i, I did some calculations you can see later on from the slides uh, so it's definitely a viable option uh, when you compare it to uh, to renewables because of the fact that uh, you need to the, the ele electrolyzer shall function uh, 90 95 percent uh, uh, of the year without this it's you know the the total cost of operation uh, will not come closer to uh, to the fossil based uh, uh, nuclear and sorry to be very from sorry to talking about uh, it from a, a, the economic perspective but uh, in terms of pricing, so price competitiveness is very important. So definitely, uh, if you do on-site uh, production of hydrogen, it's it's uh, because of the uh, the lack of network access fees, you're gonna have better end product. What it means from the nuclear power plant, I think it definitely means one thing: uh, it's product uh, diversification. So how to diversify the product of a nuclear power plant? Because uh, right now you can do you can only do one thing, which is a, a baseload electricity supply. But the, in combining uh, the two, hydrogen generation using uh, nuclear, and so to say on site, but it's not uh, really on site because of uh, of the regulation. It should uh, it should be let's say ten kilom uh, five to ten kilometers away. But it can be regarded as on site if it's a target cable. Uh, so it means product diversification uh, from this uh, perspective. And uh, uh, my maybe my last uh, remark is that government uh, support is needed until the scale up is reached, uh, and and then uh, we can uh, we can uh, have a, a hydrogen based. Uh, 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 as well as mobility and as well as uh, industrial uh, landscape uh, in Europe. So thank you very much for for this and uh, uh, thank you, thank you very see much. You in the Q &A. Uh, thank you very much, Joseph. And I'm I'm really glad to see some of the conclusions that uh, uh, we came uh, to uh, in our uh, future position paper are also uh, were also presented by you, and uh, they are uh, happening in Hungary. I will. Uh, 
uh, once again, I would uh, encourage you to to ask questions. We already have uh, quite a lot, and um, I will start uh, with with uh, to respond to a general one. If the slides presented today will be available to the participants, uh, yes, I'm I'm pretty sure that uh, um, all the speakers who will agree to share the the slides. Um, and uh, yes, we will uh, we will make it uh, available to the participants. Then uh, I will um, I will start uh, with the questions in order um, of of the presentations, and um, uh, we have a question from uh, um, I don't know from whom, but uh, definitely I know for who. So for Jean Maurice. Uh, it's a it's it's a broad I would say uh, question. What policies do you think are needed to support the wide uh, scale development of uh, such projects? I assume that uh, um, yeah, um, the question is referring to the question to the project that you presented. Yeah. So yeah, to answer to to this question, um, I, I say uh, well there, there need to be some policies regarding. Uh, uh, I should say it's a part of the the uh, answer to the poll. Huh? Uh, there are some uh, uh, policies uh, and support uh, for the, the the capex of the projects uh, that will help this kind of project to happen. But then there is also main focus on the electricity supply, uh, um, and um, that that will be uh, I would think that the two uh, keys uh, in terms of policy to support this kind of projects. And, yeah. Yeah, thank you, thank you uh, for for the the response. I I, I hope that the um, uh, uh, the one who posted the question uh, um, it's uh, is fine with the the response. Now I will uh, I will go to Nicola, and we have a question. Do you think that EU hydrogen strategy goes far enough in terms of uh, supporting the development of hydrogen projects? It is likely to help generate enough hydrogen to meet industry's uh, needs. It's a tough one, I know, because... Uh... <laughs> well, um, th th thanks. I think it's, uh, it's probably the question we are all having uh, uh... In, in our head and, and, and on, in, on which we are all engaging. Um, our industry is also uh, actively uh, leading the work in, um, in the European Clean Hydrogen Alliance uh, when, when it comes to hydrogen for industrial applications. And we are all committed to make all, all the strategies that we have on the, on the table, not only at European level, but also at national level, to become a reality. Now, um, we need to combine uh, different elements to make the strategy uh, a success. One is uh, to have uh, uh, enough volumes of hydrogen produced. Uh, the second element is to have it uh, available to the uh, end users. So how do we do we get the molecules where they are needed? Uh, and last but not least, um, we need to make this uh, um, clean hydrogen uh, um, cost competitive. And, uh, and there is a lot of uh, R&D going on, and I think the more we see projects uh, uh, being tested and deployed, uh, the, the better it is in terms of, of learning curve and, and getting things um, better and better from a, from a learning perspective. Um, yet we have an issue of, of mismatch of um, uh, time of deployment of these solutions with uh, the time to realize investments to make this uh, happening. So we need to work out also with um, the upcoming review of the state aid guidelines to make sure that uh, we can uh, bridge the gap between um, the, the cost of hydrogen that we have to face uh, today as, a, as end consumers and the cost that those that hydrogen will have uh, in, in uh, 10, 15 years time. And uh, if we manage to uh, fill in uh, uh, that gap, then uh, I, I'm sure that we can have a, a substantial uh, uh, scaling up of, uh, of, of the strategy and we, can, we will see more and more projects uh, uh, picking up uh, from the industrial side. 
Thank you, Nicola. But uh, anyway, uh, as I saw in one of the our slides, uh, there is a, a, a huge need in general of hydrogen for the moment, and uh, uh, over 90% is uh, fossil fuel uh, produced uh, hydrogen. So that should be replaced with low carbon. So definitely, we uh, we will see um, um, a huge demand of uh, of hydrogen uh, in in the future. Now um, I'm going to Joseph. We have a question that uh, related to nuclear and hydrogen. Is the EU willing to uh, give financial support to Pax2 hydrogen demonstration project using nuclear electricity? I know it's a tough one. I don't know if you can. Yes, uh... yes it's, a, it's a tough, uh, tough one. <laughs> but, uh, that's why it's a good question. So, so of course not. But, uh, but uh, we are talking about uh, uh, let's say eight to ten years time uh, and uh, our assumption is that uh, this will this will uh, work uh, without uh, uh, financial support uh, for sure uh, because uh, because by that time we're gonna have uh, pilot projects uh, done and we're gonna have uh, uh, the industrial value chain ready uh to uh, to do so so this is uh this is uh, our our dimension so we we think that uh, by that time we don't need uh, uh, government support <coughs> uh for uh, for for such a project to be uh, a, a viable investment for for investors yeah thank you i think it's uh yes it's uh I would say uh, it's it's a fair uh, answer, and uh, considering the time frame, definitely we will see some developments, both in uh, technology developments, but uh, also uh, talking about economics uh, of, yes. uh, of hydrogen. May I add one more uh, uh, very important remark that that uh, that's important to to see, uh, uh, and our thinking is is definitely about uh, using uh, green energy as much as possible but uh, how can we handle in in hungary which is a, a landlocked uh, country how can we handle uh, for example using 100% uh, uh, green energy for the, the electrolyzer it would mean that uh, we could operate it operate uh, uh, the electrolyzer let's say 40% uh, of the time mm. because we don't have a uh, massive uh, wind parks uh, we only have solar as a renewable and, and geothermal, which is not in, not, not in this game uh, because of the TCO of, uh, of, that, of uh, such uh, systems. Uh, so it means that uh, it's, it's, uh, it's economic. So we, we, we want to, in the future, we, I think uh, uh, our option is to use <coughs> as much green as possible, plus uh, uh, using uh, the night energy from the nuclear power plant. Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Now I have a question for me. Do you have some uh, life cycle cost comparison for hydrogen produced by a dedicated nuclear reactor over 60 years as compared to wind power or solar power over the same time frame? So, yes. I would, well, I didn't, uh, I, I don't have uh, such a comparison, but uh, the, considering that uh, the electricity prices uh, are an important component uh, of the hydrogen production, um, and considering that uh, if you want to compare a nuclear power plant over the 60 years, what is the lifetime, the minimum lifetime, because it can go uh, uh, over up to 80 years with the lifetime extension, then you have to, to build uh, um, two times uh, wind power uh, because they are having uh, they are having a, a lifetime of around 25 years, and uh, adding to that uh, the the network costs that are uh, higher uh, for the renewables. And uh, at the end of the day, I'm I'm pretty sure that nuclear is very competitive comparing uh, uh, with renewables uh, over such a long uh, period of time, but also. 
on shorter time, I would say, because as you heard uh, from uh, from uh, for, from the today presenters, it's the nuclear is not only uh, a stable, let's say, producer of uh, electricity, but also the price uh, is uh, of of the nuclear electricity production is uh, is providing kind of a stability. So it's also very important for uh, base load uh, hydrogen production. Hoping that uh, I responded to the to the question, I, I can uh, I think that we we have uh, another we we can go for another round of uh, questions for all the speakers. Then um, I'm going uh, again um, to Hynamics. In the vision of Hynamics, oriented towards the use of alternative hydrogen fuels instead of to direct hydrogen use. No. So, I yeah, to to answer that question, I would say that our approach uh, was uh, mainly to address direct use of hydrogen. Uh, as I was saying to for industrial purposes or mobility purposes, uh, and that's what drives our today's project. And, and those two projects that were presented, uh, I think they are more uh, added value uh, to the project uh, to combine a hydrogen with CO2, for example. Um, but uh, yeah, our main focus today is to uh, uh, provide hydrogen for direct use. And then the rest is more an upside on certain kind of projects. Yeah, thank you. But uh, there is another question for you, and I don't know, it's an interesting one. So for the German project, yeah. uh, you are going to use offshore wind uh, power. Uh, can you, can you, uh, yes, the question is what is happening when uh, the wind is not blowing, but I think that uh, I can elaborate. Yeah. Yes. You... So, so that, that project without giving too many details, but that project, as I was saying, is a 30, uh, 30 megawatt uh, electrolysis project. And there is an approach here um, to have roughly, roughly 17 uh, megawatt uh, as a as a load base uh, pro provided by a, a dedicated PPA uh, from offshore wind uh, and the rest, uh, the complement uh, from 17 up to 30 megawatt, it will be uh, based on a, an aggregator uh, working uh, on a day to day basis, uh, optimizing um, and matching, I would say, the need from the refinery uh, with the electricity supply. Uh, for the electrolyzer, so uh, that that will involve uh, for sure uh, um, tools like uh, an energy management system uh, that will take into consideration the needs of the refinery on a day-to-day -day basis, and use that base load uh, from a PPA uh, to be completed with a uh, uh, other source of uh, of electricity, whether from the market or um, from another source. Uh, but that will be the work of a dedicated um, aggregator. Yeah. Thank you very much. Going very fast because we have only four minutes left for Nicola. Do you think that the impact of CO2 emissions cost carbon pricing uh, could speed up the process of introduction of the hydrogen in the chemical industry? Well, um, it, it's certainly it, it's, it's a cost component. Uh, we are paying carbon costs in our uh, emissions uh, we are also paying in uh, the electricity that we consume and also in the uh, PPAs that we we sign up there's also a carbon component in there so there is uh, the, the carbon cost it, it's a cost uh, and certainly if one can avoid cost uh, that, that 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 becomes part of the equation but to me what can uh, help um, more than that I mean it will certainly help but what would help us will help more than that is to get um, a proper accounting um, on um, carbon emissions, uh, particularly when we, uh, we couple it with the circular economy, and and uh, so that we can um, uh, capture our uh, emissions, CO2 emissions, uh, and then uh, with an electrolyzer, um, convert into new feedstock or new fuel um, that can be uh, delivering uh, um, more carbon savings um, in, in the economy. And at the moment, the accounting rules uh, are not there yet. And this is, uh, uh, to me, the, one of the biggest regulatory uh, hurdles that we need to address in the, in the coming months to make sure that we can unlock this potential as well. Thank you, Nicola. 
Now the last question for uh, Josef. Does the Central Hungary project include a pipe network for distribution of uh, hydrogen? Uh, no, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, uh, we have uh, a pilot uh, regarding the pipeline uh, in another location in, in Hungary, but uh, <coughs> because it's a small scale uh, pilot, if, uh, if you saw it's only 1.5 uh, megawatt electrolyzer, so it's, uh, it's not that big. I think uh, transportation is, is possible. Uh, we are but we are. okay. Uh, we we have some issues uh, hearing uh, Joseph. Um, can you hear me now? Yes, I, we, yes, we can hear you now. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, no, uh, it doesn't uh, because it's a very small scale uh, pilot. Uh, if you could see, it's only 1.5 uh, megawatt uh, electrolyzer, so it's uh, it's only for demonstration purposes and serving the the 10 fuel cell buses plus uh, some forklifts uh, in the logistical park. So it's uh, it's not a, it, no, but uh, but uh, we think that uh, uh, the pipeline uh, uh, as an infrastructure element is is very important and uh, for uh, transportation uh, purposes. So yeah, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, all of you. We have another question, and we will try to uh, to send our responses. But unfortunately, we have to to close our session um, uh, very soon. Um, I would like just to conclude, and um, we have very interesting uh, presentation from different perspectives. I'm. Um, I'm happy to hear that uh, our thoughts and uh, our work for the uh, future position paper are in line with uh, with the views of uh, of different stakeholders, and we heard today uh, similar conclusions like uh, we are drawing for our paper. And um, with this, I would like very much to to thank um, to to all the speakers and um, to the participants and for the questions and uh, the very uh, good discussions. And uh, please follow uh, for Atom for uh, future events uh, on on different topics. Thank you very much, and I wish you a very pleasant afternoon. Can I quickly just remind you all if you could complete the survey that is in the link? Thank you. Bye.